All right, we are going to go deeply into, well, more deeply into composition of functions. We've gone over it before. In the very beginning of the class when we were talking about function arithmetic. Um, but now we're going to go into it more deeply. So you'll recognize it as we start. We're going to go over some of the problems you did at the beginning, and then we're going to progress from there to a more um, a more complicated level, a more college algebra level. So here we go. We have we are going to take the composition of G with F, and that's written like this. F circle G of negative five means this, so we have to translate it. It means we're going to take F of, but what goes in the argument is going to be the other function evaluated at negative five. So all we have to do is find out what that number is. This number right here. Well, that's not going to be hard. If G of X. Oh, equals X to the third power. Then G of negative five, let's put an implication arrow, G of negative five will equal negative five to the third power. And that, well, let's put it in the calculator. It's negative 125, but I wanna show you what you should do whenever a number is negative is that, and then caret three. And then we can hit enter, negative 125. So that's what G of negative five equals, it equals negative 125. So I will just put a 120, negative 125 in the argument of the F function. So F of X equals four X plus nine. So F of negative 125 will equal four times negative 125 plus nine. And then all I have to do is write that out. I think it's going to be 500, but negative 500, but let's see. Negative of, um, um, no, clear. Four parentheses, negative 125, parentheses closed, plus nine, enter. No, it's negative 491. OK, Be oh, because I added the 9, yeah. Plus 9 is negative 491. So that's our answer. This is a two-step problem. First, you have to find G of negative 5, which is easy. You know how to do that. You just stick the negative 5 in for every X, and you got it. Then you take this number and put it in here. So you have f of negative 125. And since f of x equals 4x plus 9, we put negative 125 in for the x, and we get negative 491 as our answer. So this was one of the very, very basic problems we covered 
at the beginning. And now let's move to an X squared. We're going to have F of G of negative 2. So again, F of G of negative 2 equals F on the outside. Whatever goes in the left position goes in the left position here. And then there's the argument of F. And we're going to put G of negative 2 in there. Now what that means is we'll put G of negative 2 in for every X in F of X. So since F of X equals 3X minus 1, what I'm going to do is this, put G of negative 2 in there. So all I have to do is find G of negative 2. Let's do that over here. G of negative 2, well, G of X equals X squared plus 1. Now, when that's negative, you have to put parentheses around the X, okay? So parentheses negative 2 squared plus 1 is going to be negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4, plus 1, which is 5. Which is a whole lot better than the number we had last time. So what this means is that f of g of negative 2, which is f circle g of negative 2, we're going to have 3 times 5, minus 1, and that's going to be 15 minus 1, and that's going to be 14. So the answer is that F circle G of negative 2 equals 14. And when you're working with a number argument, like negative 2 or negative 5 or any number in this position, it, the problem is always going to be quick and easy. Sometimes you might have to use a calculator, but it's still going to be faster than what we're about to do. So let's write a blue box around the 14. and a blue box around the negative 491 because that's what you would type in the answer box if you were to get this exact problem, which you probably would not. Now we move on down to something that's a little more difficult because X is in the argument of the function now. OK, so we're going to be working with, oops, I'd rather go to black. F circle G of X. And I'll type, I'll type, I'll write what that is. That's F of G of X. So, I actually like to do this. Let me go back a step. Well, no, no. There. What I want to do is this because I think it makes it easier. I'm going to write f of x equals negative 6x plus 9. OK, so F of G of X is going to equal negative 6 
times g of x plus 9. So, now g of x is 7x plus 9 right here. So what I'll do is negative 6 times 7x plus 9 plus 9. Now this is just basically arithmetic with a little bit of algebra thrown in. We're going to distribute the negative 6 to the 7 and to the 9. And wait a minute, I suddenly want to make sure that everything is on. Yes, it is. Okay, sometimes I get a little insecure. Negative 42 x minus, well, negative 6 times positive 9 will be negative 54, which translates to minus 54 plus 9. Now, if I go over here and I type negative 54 plus 9, enter, I get negative 45. So this tells me that f of g of x, which is f circle g of x equals negative 42x and negative 54 plus 9 is negative, or in this case, minus 45. There you go. F of g of x equals negative 42x minus 45. So this is the answer to A. Now, is this going to work this time? Yes. Yes. This is part A. There. And that's our answer to part A. Oh, and we've got to give the domain. All right. That's easy. Negative 42x to the 1 minus 45. This is a linear polynomial. Linear because the x is raised to a 1. Any polynomial has the domain negative infinity to positive infinity. So you don't have to worry a lot about polynomials. Okay. Now we're going to go to B. Okay. B. B, B, B. G of F of X and its domain. So, G circle F of X is going to be G. G is on the outside now because it's on the left side. G of F of X. So, since G of X equals 7x plus 9, then g of f of x is going to equal 7 times f of x plus 9. So now we go up and we see what f of x is. It's negative 6x plus 9. And I'm going to leave this down so I can see that. 
while I'm writing it, seven parentheses, negative six X plus nine. And then a plus nine out here. And that's what G of F of X equals. So now we have to work it out. Again, seven times negative six is negative 42 times X plus seven times nine is 63 plus nine. Well, 63 plus nine is a positive 72. It's really true. All right. So that's going to equal negative 42x plus 72. And that's what g of f of x equals. I'm going to put a blue box around it. Now again, that X is to the one power. So this is a linear polynomial, which means its domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. So no sweat there. Okay, so oh, I should put a B there. Let's put a B. B. All right. So we had to work through A. And then we had to work through B. Notice that both of these functions are linear polynomials. So both of these functions, these functions that go into making our composition of functions, they both are going to have negative infinity to positive infinity as their domain. So when you compose two polynomials that have the same domain, negative infinity to positive infinity, that's going to be the domain of your, of your solution. And that works here the same way. Because all we're doing is dividing. Notice there, I mean, dividing, adding, adding and subtracting. Notice that there, there's no no multiplication of functions and there's no division. Most important thing, there's no division or square rooting of functions. And that can mess with your domain. We'll have some of that later. Okay, now we're going to find f of g of x and g of f of x again, just like before. But notice that this function is a linear quadratic. It is a linear, linear polynomial, negative infinity to positive infinity. This is a quadratic polynomial, highest power two, but it is a polynomial. And therefore its domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. So let's find f of, it says, that's first, so we'll find f of g of x first. And f is going to be on the outside with g of x on the inside. Okay. So I have to find f of x first, f of x equals x plus one. 
And so f of g of x is going to equal g of x, whatever that is, and we're going to add one to it, and that's all there is to this. Well, g of x is 5x squared minus 4x minus 1. 5x squared minus 4x minus 1. That's what g of x is. And then we're going to add a 1. So I should have made that little like that. Um, and so we'll have 5x squared minus 4x minus 1 plus 1, and they zero out. So here's your answer, f circle g of x equals 5x squared minus 4x which is a quadratic polynomial. And so the domain of all polynomials is negative infinity to positive infinity. And now we find the other way, g of f of x. So notice there are some steps here that you can follow. If you're finding f of g of x, well, first you translate to something that makes more sense. f is on the outside, so you write down what f of x equals, and then right below it, you can write f of g of x, and when you do it like this, you can see immediately where you're going to be plugging in, substituting, g of x for x. So it's just easier to see what you're doing. And then you put in 5x squared minus 4x minus 1 for the g of x. Everything stays right above and below each other. So you can just see easily what to do. I think it's the perfect lazy person's way to do composition of functions. Okay, now we're going to find g of f, g circle f of x, and that's going to now have g on the outside, g of f of x. So I'm going to put f of x into every x in g of x. So I'm going to come over here and write down what g of x is. 5x squared minus 4x minus 1. So g of f of x is going to substitute f of x for every x. There. From here on out, all uh, we know what we're going to do. I have to find out what f of x is. It's x plus 1. Thank goodness it's easy. But this is not going to be as easy as the others have been because we're going to have x plus 1 squared. This is a binomial squared. Meanwhile, we can distribute this minus 4, or oh no, not yet, silly negative 4 times x plus 1 minus 1. So, don't distribute your 5. Whatever you do, this is going to be 5 
times x plus 1 times x plus 1 because you're squaring a binomial. Over here, we're going to distribute the negative 4 to both the x and the 1 in parentheses. So minus 4x minus negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. So we'll have minus 4 minus 1. Now over here, this will be 5 times x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 1 minus 4x and then you subtract 4 and you subtract one more, which means you subtract 5. We need to get our <clears throat> like terms together there. We have a 1x plus 1x, that's 2x. 5 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 4x minus 5. And then I'm going to distribute the 5, distribute the 5, distribute the 5. So we'll have 5x squared plus 10x plus 5 minus 4x minus 5. Now 10x and minus 4x are like terms. I'm going to combine them. 5 and minus 5 are like terms. I'm going to combine them. So my final answer is going to be 5x squared plus 10x minus 4x is plus 6 x and then 5 minus 5 is 0 so once again I have a 0 on the end and this is a quadratic polynomial so g of f of x is going to equal 5x squared plus 6x this is a polynomial how do I know? Well, there are no fraction powers. There are no negative powers. So I'm home free here. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And here's our answer to the second part. So mostly what you do with these problems, mostly you're substituting, but you have to do it in a very orderly way or you get mixed up. I get mixed up if I'm not doing this in a very orderly way. Now, look at this. Ooh, a fraction. Yes. Can you back up a little, a little bit? Say it again. Uh, can you go, uh, can go, go a little bit? Yeah, right. A little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah, right. Hold on one second. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, ma'am. I'm glad you're taking notes. Notes are always better when you do it yourself. Yeah, yes, ma'am.
OK, thank you. You're welcome. Now, these also are very special functions. This looks scary because it's a um, 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 a fraction. I was going to say a function. It is a function, but it's a fraction function. Thank goodness there are no X's on the bottom, just a number. So our domain for each of these is going to be negative infinity to, excuse me, positive infinity. Now, once again, we're going to find f of g of x and g of f of x. So let's get started. f, oops, f of g, f circle g of x is going to be or is f of g of x. So that means we're taking g of x and we're putting it inside f of x. So I'm going to write down f of x. Like that. And so f of g of x will be three times x plus six over three minus six. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Well, this is what we're going to do. Change your three to a three over one. That equals three. 3 times x plus 6 over 3 minus 6. Now we're multiplying two fractions. When you have a 3 up there and a 3 down there, they cancel each other. And so you're going to be left with We'll put in an extra step here. You probably don't need it, but we're going to. We'll have x plus six on top and a one on the bottom, minus six. Well, x plus six over one is just x plus six. So we'll have x plus six minus six. And six minus six is zero. So F circle G of X just equals X. And the, that domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. There. Now we're going to find G of F of X. Which is G on the outside of F of X. So since G of X equals X plus six over three, then G of F of X will equal F of X plus six over three. Do not divide the three into a six. We're not done. 
So g of f of x is going to equal whatever f of x is. f of x is 3x minus 6. That's going to be 3x minus 6 over 3. No, it's not. Oh, it is. 3x minus 6, but I forgot to add, this is f of x right here. I forgot to add the 6. There it is. 3x minus 6 plus 6 over 3. Now, whether I like it or not, I'm going to have to move over. Yep. And come up here. So f of g of x, g of f of x, which is what we're working on right now, is going to be 3x minus 6 plus 6 over 3. The minus 6 plus 6 zeroes out and we're left with 3x over 3. 3, and then the 3's cancel, leaving me with x, the same exact answer, and of course the same exact domain, domain, negative infinity to infinity. Now, something I neglected to do up here was put the x in an answer box, and here I'm going to put the x in an answer box, and I'm going to tell you something that you're going to need tomorrow, tomorrow, Monday. Something you're going to need to know for Monday, but we'll go over that again, and that is what we've just done is we've taken f of g of x Let me erase that. We've taken f of g of x, and we've gotten the answer x. And then we did it the other way around, g of f of x, and we also got the answer x. That means g of x, g of x, and f of x have a very important relationship to each other. They are inverse, yeah, they're inverse functions of each other. So f of x, that's what this means. Let me come down here. We have just proven or proved, if you're from Canada, that f of x and g of x are inverses. Of each other. We also, in the arithmetic of functions assignment, uh, went lightly, very, very lightly into inverse functions. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow, Monday, we're going to go heavily into inverse functions. It's very interesting. Some functions have inverses and some do not. And it all depends on the domain, which is why we're spending time going over domain. It's going to become an important issue. But that's on Monday and this is now. We have a couple of more problems to do, just two. We can live through that. How about f of x and g of x? Oh my goodness, this looks impossible. 
the domain is going to change. The domain of f of x, well, that's just a polynomial. The domain of f of x is negative infinity to infinity. But g of x is a square root. That has its own domain. The domain of g of x is bracket zero to infinity. That's going to affect both of our answers for domain in these problems. So let's do it. f of g of x equals f on the outside and g of x on the inside. So f of x equals 7x plus 4. F of X, whatever is in this position, kind of provides a shell that we can put the other function into. F of G of X is going to be seven times G of X plus four. So that will be seven times the square root of X plus four. The fact that this has a square root in it means that the square root is going to force the domain of this function to be bracket zero to infinity. So that's the domain. And this is F circle G of X. So let me put a blue box around that. Seven times the square root of X Seven times the square root of X plus four. Now we're going to go the other way. We're going to find G of F of X, and that will be G on the outside providing the shell and f of x will be inside g of x. So if g of x just equals the square root of x, let's make sure. Yes, g of x equals the square root of x. Then g of f of x is just going to be the square root of f of x. And f of x is 7x plus 4. Now the domain 
let's write this, G circle F of X. This is what G circle F of X equals. So that's the answer for that box. The domain is a little more complicated. Seven X plus four is going to be greater than or equal to zero. That's what you do when you find the um, um, domain of a square root function. Or a root function that has an even domain, but we're not here to study radicals. We're here to study composition. However, we do have to take um, a little uh, foray, a little um, path, a little uh, adventure into the world of the arguments of um, square root functions. So here we go. I'm going to solve for X And so that's going to give me 7x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And then I'll divide by 7 and divide by 7. And that will give us x is greater than or equal to negative 4 over 7. And the uh, interval uh, notation way of writing this is, well, we're looking at negative four over seven and everything greater than negative four over seven. So we're going to be going all the way to positive infinity. And this is your domain. So that's a little more difficult. We did go over finding the domain of square root functions when we covered square roots, which is a little farther back. But never fear, the next problem is back to polynomials. This is a cubic polynomial, but the fact that it's a polynomial means that the domain of f of x is negative infinity to positive infinity. And x plus one is a polynomial. It's a little polynomial, but it's a polynomial. So it too will have domain negative infinity to positive infinity. So we're gonna find f of g of x and g of f of x. And the only problem is that it's gonna be a little longer as you'll see. Okay, so f of g of x. Uh, 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 no, I've got to translate it. f circle g of x equals F on the outside, G of X is in the argument of the F function. All right, so I'm gonna write out what F of X is. F of X equals X cubed minus eight X squared plus two X plus Seven. Now we're not trying to find the zeros of this like we were yesterday. We are just composing two functions. So f of g of x equals, are you ready? 
g of x cubed minus 8 times g of x squared plus 2 times g of x plus 7. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, cheers. Here we go. I'm going to move over to the left edge of the page. We are going to have x plus 1 cubed minus 8 times x plus 1 squared plus 2 times x plus 1 plus 7. And I better write my um, f of g of x out here. f of, well, let's say x plus 1, because that's what g of x is, equals. All right, now comes the fun stuff, y'all. x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. That's x plus 1 to the third. Minus 8 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 plus 2 times x plus 1. I can go ahead and distribute that. 2 times x and 2 times 1. That will give me plus 2x plus 2 and then that final plus 7. Oh my goodness, are we going to survive this? Yes, we are. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply just because it's a habit the last two binomials together and let the first binomial wait. So when I multiply these together, I get x squared plus 1x plus 1x, that's plus 2x, plus 1 times plus 1 is plus 1. Minus 8 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. Well, that's x plus 1 times x plus 1. You're going to get the same thing. x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 2 plus 7 is 9. Okay, now. I'm going to take the x from here, from the first set of parentheses, and multiply it by x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then I'm going to take the plus 1 from the first set of parentheses and multiply it by x squared plus 2x plus one. And then I'm going to distribute my negative eight times x squared, negative eight times two x, negative eight times plus one. And that will give me minus eight x squared, minus 16 x, minus eight, minus eight, okay, and then plus this two x plus the nine, plus two x plus nine. Now, I'm going to distribute the x into the x squared plus two x plus one, and one times x squared plus two x plus one, 
is just x squared plus 2x plus 1. So coming back here, we'll have x to the third plus 2x squared plus x. Okay, then plus x squared plus 2x plus 1. minus 8x squared, minus 16x, minus 8, plus 9, I'll put that plus 1 over here, plus 2x. Oh my goodness. So, we're almost done though, but you have to be really careful when you get here. I am going to actually be color coding. I'm going to go on a search for all my x squared terms. The x cubed is the only, only cube term. So x squared, and there's an x squared. And that's a one. And here's an x squared. OK, so let's write that down together. Plus, no, I don't want to do that, though. Plus, well, why not? Maybe it'll be easier. Plus 2x squared plus 1x squared minus 8x squared. Now I'm going to go green, and I'm going to circle all the x terms, the x to the 1 power, understood 1 power. Okay, so I'm going to circle them in green. I'm going to include the sign in front of the term. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write plus x plus 2x minus 16x. Ah, really? And there's another 2x? That's 2x squared plus x plus a 2x minus 16x, minus 8, and then there was this 2x anyway. So, yes, my goodness. All right, minus 16x plus 2x. And then, I need another color for this. There's a one here. and I already combined these, there's a one here, a plus one. Those are both plus ones. So plus one and plus one. Whew. Okay, a final check is we, we uh, add our terms up here, then we add our terms down here to make absolutely sure I didn't forget anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Now we're going to do this. X to the third plus. Well, actually, I think it'll probably end up being a minus. So plus 2x squared plus 1x squared is 3x squared minus 8x squared will be minus 5x squared. So I have 2x squareds, I add another x squared, that's 3x squared, 
but then I take away 8x squared, so I'm in the hole for 5x squared, is what this says. Now, over here, I've got, I've got a 1. 1x plus 2x is 3x. 3x minus 16x is minus 13x plus 2x is minus 11x. Cool. So that's 3 minus 6, 16 is negative 13 plus 2 is negative 11. Yes, so minus 11x plus 2. Good. Grief. And that is our answer just for f of g. Now, quite honestly, g of f is going to be a lot easier, but let's write it down correctly. f circle g of x is going to equal x to the third minus 5 x squared minus 11 x plus 2. And that was very difficult. But let's finish it up, finish it up so we can go eat some ice cream. Now we're going to find g of f of x. And I want to put a nice barrier right here between these two problems. Okay. All right, so G is going to be on the outside. That's cool. G is going to be on the outside. G of F of X. So g of x is just x plus 1. Make sure of that. Yes. So g of g of f of x is going to put an f of x in there for that x. plus one. Now we know that f of x is a little bit dirty. Uh, right, so I'm going to be very creative here because I won't be able to see it when I write it down there. I'm gonna do this, a little bit of creativity. So f of x is x to the third minus 8x squared plus 2x plus 7. Make it bigger. Okay. And then we're adding the plus 1. Plus 1. Oh, that was very creative, Barbara. So... This plus one will add on to that plus seven. And we will have the answer x to the third minus eight x squared plus two x plus eight. And that is what g of f of x will be. Much easier, much quicker. Why can't they all be like that? I don't know is the answer. I suppose that would make life much too easy for us. So, 
That's it. That's it for today.